Welcome to Arguing Art. I'm Adam Sterner, and this is my esteemed colleague, Michael Luke. In our continuing series on money, 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 <laughs> money, <laughs> we are discussing. <laughs> Uh, uh, we are discussing art products. Art products. Are they art? Are they not art? When do they cease to become art? <laughs> All right, so today we're going to talk about um, art products. Uh, uh, you know, does a coffee mug that has uh, the Mona Lisa on it, is that still art? Does, a poster with the Mona Lisa on it, is that still art? Like, when does it stop become, or it, when does it, yeah, stop being art and becomes a uh, product or commodity? Uh, wh where is that line? Uh, the thing with this one is it's kind of a slippery slope that you have to be, uh, which is good that we bring this up, too, because mm -hmm. that's uh, often used in philosophy, and we haven't... Slippery we, slope. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a slippery slope is basically when you have to accept one thing, it leads to you having to accept another, which leads to having to accept uh, another and another and another and another and another and another and another. And it's a slippery slope going down uh, where next thing you know, like everything's art. Mm -hmm. And it's something you have to be careful with when you uh, word your uh, arguments um, to protect yourself against slippery slope arguments. Yes, indeed. So, Adam, <clears throat> when, uh, when does something stop being art? Or... Does it ever stop being art? Uh, what is one argument on that? One argument would have to do with the intention of what it was designed for. If it was originally a painting that was intended to be displayed on uh, as a poster or a coffee cup or a million tiny little pictures on somebody's decorative pencil, yep. then <clears throat> if the context is staying the same and the intention is staying the same, then that little product can still be art, still give someone the emotion, still give someone the pleasure of owning it, and still carry through with all of the original, oh... <clears throat> intent. Uh, in, intent. Essentially and, intent. And, and uh, requirements of that original piece. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea being, uh, I think a big part of this idea is that the uh, composition remains the same um, because... It, you know, when you start adjusting things, it's almost like you're creating a new piece a lot of times. So, uh, you know, to talk about, like, I think prints are a good example because uh, when you buy a print of an art, uh, an art piece, um, it, it is that piece. Size might be a little bit different, uh, but it's proportionate. It's compositionally the same thing. So the question is, is that art? The argument against that, then, is that... Uh, that composition may not be the same. You know, no one who has ever seen uh, a masterpiece in real life will say it's the same as seeing the poster. There's the scale of the piece that must be considered. Uh, there's even the fact that you can't see the uh, the paint strokes as well, or you can't see that dimensionality. That even paintings, even you know, paintings are two D, but they they have depth within the within the lines of the brush strokes. They do. <clears throat> and even the colors are different uh, to a, a very real degree in the fact that it's, it's a different print process, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you're not going to achieve the same thing. Is that enough to say that a, a print is no longer art? And, and that following with that argument, you might assume that any recreation of an, a piece of art <clears throat> is no longer that art itself. It's just a recreation it's almost a novelty item so then you would almost have to um consider the fact that okay if say a movie is mm -hmm. art uh so accepting the fact that movies are art um where is that original it's the same with like photographs if you take photographs as art uh where is that original see and that's interesting it you could argue it a number of different ways but i think the ultimate with that argument would be looking at where it was intended to be displayed. Some movies are intended to be displayed on the big screen in the theater. Uh, Avatar would be a great example, shot yeah. particularly for 3D. Whereas some filmmakers know that their ultimate 
release goal is DVD. Okay. Here's another one then. What about literature? Literature. Is only the first edition print the considered art then? Interesting. Or is new prints considered uh, a copy? Or is that still art? Because, uh, you know, you have to take consideration when you turn the page and how it leaves you hanging, the layout of the uh, um, the pages, the uh, the font used, you know. Sure. When does that cease to become art if we won't accept art prints? Sure. You know? What if you have, yeah, 15 different versions of the same book all released at the same time? Mm-hmm. Which one is the art? Or is the art just the story itself and the way that it's displayed, just graphic design and and the craft of it that isn't actually directly which then attri- you'd, you'd, uh, yeah, but then you attributed to that it. would lead to uh, coffee mugs with the Mona Lisa being on the side, being the same overall art experience or the same generally accepted art value of the original. See the slippery slope here. <sighs> it's like a black diamond. <clears throat> <laughs> all the trees and things in yep. the way that are hard to kind yep. of uh talk your way around it's it's a tough one um you know if you're watching us on a, a video server or some other website come join us at arguingart.com uh let us know what you think when does art stop being art or reproductions of art uh stop being art and become commodity or product i don't know uh, yeah. I, I honestly like we always talk about how we have our beliefs I'm not sure what my answer is on this one. I'm yeah. excited to see what you guys think. So, anything else we want to add? Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching.